why are the astronauts on the space station weightless? Most people think that when you're in space, you're weightless because there's no gravity. That is a misconception. Again, the International Space Station is not very far away. It's only about 250 miles up. So, how much gravity are they actually experiencing? Well, this is a physics class. You guys learned the formula for gravity. So let's just figure it out. What's the formula for the force of gravity? Yeah. S of G yeah. equals. Let's figure out how much gravity they're experiencing on the space station. Rather than calculating the force of gravity, let's calculate the acceleration due to gravity, okay? So the acceleration due to gravity, um, force is equal to what? Mass times acceleration. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So let me replace that with mass times acceleration, where this is the acceleration due to gravity, and this is the mass of the satellite, or the mass of the space station, right? So here I'm going to do mass of the space station, and I'll change these from the mass of the space station to the mass of the Earth. Okay? So now to solve for the acceleration due to gravity, you just divide both sides by the mass of the space station, right? And you end up getting that the acceleration due to gravity is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by distance squared. We know um, that the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared, right? So let's find out what it is at 250 miles above the Earth. So we're trying to find acceleration due to gravity. So that's equal to g, which is times the mass of the Earth divided by the distance. Now this is going to be, the distance we need to plug in here is the radius of the Earth plus 250 miles. Let's do this in meters. We need to do this in meters. Squared, thank you. If you do that calculation, I already did it. It is 8.7 meters per second squared. They're effectively under the same force of gravity up there that we are right here. So, why are they weightless? There's gravity there, for sure. Probably need to give you the hint that the way they train astronauts for um, weightlessness, get them ready to go up into space before they've experienced it, is um, they put them in this thing called the vomit comet. It's this plane that goes up and then it starts diving. It doesn't dive straight down, but it goes at an angle and it goes fast enough that the people inside are in free fall and the plane is effectively just in free fall around them. So it's as if they're weightless in this environment. So based on that hint, hopefully you might be able to guess people on the International Space Station are weightless because the International Space Station is in free fall, right? But that doesn't make sense, does it? So imagine this is the surface of the Earth, they're only 250 miles up. How long would it take for the space station to hit the ground if it really was in free fall? Again, this is a physics class. You guys know the equations, how to do this. The equation you need here is that distance traveled is equal to your initial velocity times time plus one half at squared, right? So, the distance traveled is going to be this distance here. Right? We're only worrying about the y axis right now. Um, so that's 400 kilometers, 250 miles is 400 kilometers, 400,000 meters is equal to your initial velocity in the y direction is zero. So this is zero, this term just canceled out. So then you're left with one half acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. Time is what we're looking for. If you solve this equation for time, you end up getting 286 seconds, which is 4.76 minutes. It, take, it would take less than five minutes for the space station to crash into the Earth if it really were in free fall. So why doesn't it? I'm giving you guys the answer that it is in free fall. Basically, the point is that the space station is moving. It's not just falling straight down. It is moving, and it is moving fast. It's moving at 17,000 miles an hour. 17,000 miles an hour. That means it goes all the way around the Earth in 90 minutes. It only takes an hour and a half to go all the way around the Earth which means in a single day, it orbits the Earth 17 times. Keep that number in mind. I'm going to come back to that in a few minutes. 17 times a day. Okay? So this thing is cruising. 
So it's not just falling straight down. If it had a little bit of velocity, it would just do this. You might think that that would make it take longer to hit the ground, but it would It'd still travel this distance in the y axis in five minutes. It would just hit over here instead of over here. But it's traveling really fast, right? It's traveling really fast, right? So this scale isn't going to be helpful for us anymore. We need to zoom our scale out. Scale needs to look more like this. This is the Earth. The International Space Station is not only that tall. It would take it five minutes to fall that distance. If it was moving a little faster, five minutes there, there. You guys see what's going to end up happening? Yeah. It's going to take it five minutes to fall this distance here. From, to get from this elevation to this elevation. But if it's moving fast enough, by the time it reaches that elevation, the Earth will have curved away from it by that same elevation. Oh. The Earth is, or the International Space Station is in free fall, but it's moving so fast that the Earth curves away from it at the same rate that it falls towards the Earth. That is the definition of what orbit is. Something being in orbit doesn't just mean it's not experiencing gravity or it's just going around. It's in free fall but it's moving sideways so fast that the Earth curves away from it at the same rate that it falls. That's what orbit is. But there's one other way to think of what an orbit is that's going to be much more useful for doing calculations and stuff. And it has to do with centrifugal force. Convenient that I taught you guys that on Tuesday, right? So, after the lesson I gave you guys on Tuesday, one of my questions would have been, well, the Earth is spinning, right? Like I, t I told you guys that if you consider the center of the Earth to be at rest, the Earth is spinning, something at the equator, because of that spin, is moving at a thousand miles an hour, roughly, relative to the center of the Earth. A thousand miles an hour. And the radius of the Earth is really big. You'd think that would have a significant centrifugal force, right? This is a physics class. Let's figure out what that centrifugal force is. I gave you guys the equation on Tuesday that the acceleration due to the centrifugal force is equal to the radius times omega squared, where omega is your angular velocity. So we're trying to find what is the angular acceleration on us right now due to the spin of the Earth. So that means angular acceleration is going to be equal to, what's our r here? Oh, what is radius this? Of the Earth. It's the radius of the Earth. Is and that is in meters. Or is it and then what yeah, is our omega? What's our angular velocity? How fast does the Earth spin? It, it spins once per day, right? That is our angular well, velocity. One it's rotation. one rotation okay. per okay. day. And you're right, we do need this in radians per second to use it as an angular velocity in this equation. So how do you get from rotations per day to some hour? How many radians are there in a rotation? Two pi radians in a rotation. So you multiply by two pi or divide by two pi? Mm -hmm. You so then you multiply, put two right? You need rotations. Yeah. You need rotations on the bottom here, so that rotations in the denominator cancels out with rotations in the numerator, and then two pi radians. And now you have radians per day. How do you get from radians per day to radians per second? It's like another bridge. Yeah, it's just another one of those bridges. You just need to know how many seconds there are in a day. I will provide you with that number. Are we going to be multiplying by that number or dividing by that number? Dividing. We need days to be in the numerator now, so that this numerator day and this denominator day cancel. So in one day, there are 86,400 seconds. If you were to plug this in your calculator, you'd end up getting the angular velocity or in radians per second, which is, yeah, that is squared. Yeah. Thank you. I keep forgetting. If you do that calculation, you end up getting that the acceleration due to the centrifugal force on us right now, as we speak, due to the spin of the Earth, is 0.0337 meters per second squared. As compared to the 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravity, that is negligible. That's why it doesn't seem like we're flying on the Earth. If you actually figure out the ratio there is 1 290th. So technically, someone who weighed 290 pounds would be made one pound lighter because of the centrifugal force, but again, that's relatively negligible. But 
How fast would the Earth have to spin for those two things to balance out? Make the acceleration equal my We can figure it out. <laughs> Alright, so we're using the same equation here, right? Now we want our acceleration to be 9.8 meters per second squared so that it cancels out with the 9.8 meter per second squared of gravity. Okay? So we plug 9.8 in here and we're trying to find what new um, angular velocity. So solve this equation for angular velocity, you end up getting new angular velocity of 0 0.00124, but that's in radians per second. If you convert this from radians per second to rotations per day, it's, wait for it, 9.8. 17. <laughs> it's 17. You guys saw, remember oh, how I yeah, told you to remember oh, that yeah. the International Space Station goes around 17 times a day? Oh, so it's because its centrifugal force is balancing out with its force due to gravity. Like, another way to think of things being in orbit is that what they're experiencing due to centrifugal force cancels out what they're experiencing due to gravity. So this is going to make doing calculations much easier. So, you pointed out that to build the space elevator, we need to do what? We, have... we need a satellite to be orbiting at the exact same speed that the Earth is turning.